people factor. Folks get on our last nerves, don't they? And guess what? We get on folks' last nerves. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online every Saturday. Now, we've got a message from the Lord, and we are going to deal with the difference of being in the spirit and being in the flesh. We're going to deal with letting a rip or using the self-control that the Holy Spirit gives us. How are we going to conduct our lives? How are we going to order our steps? Or are we going to allow God to order our steps? Go with me to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, starting at verse 7. A lot of times life can hit us in the teeth. Life can hit us on our blind side. Life can sideswipe us, rear end us. Life can put a barrier between us and the blessing. Life can bring delays, roadblocks, and detours. However, God, there's the difference right there. God knows the plans he has for us. He knows what lies ahead of us. And he understands the areas, the frustrations we deal with. So my question to you is, are you going to deal with it God's way? That would be in the spirit. Or are you going to deal with it your way? That would be called in the flesh. So let's read verse 7. Because God wants to comfort his people and encourage us to know it's going to be all right. In the long run, it's going to be all right. All right. Starting James chapter 5, starting at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw not. Now this advice coming up in this next verse is for those vicissitudes of life and those irritating moments when we have to deal one with another. At verse 9, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Now, let me let me go into that a little bit. Sometimes when we work with well-intended well people, we work with people who love us and people we love. We're not talking enemies now, just the people factor. Folks get on our last nerves, don't they? And guess what? We get on folks' last nerves. But remember one thing. No matter what, you cannot hold a grudge. You cannot hold resentment. You cannot hold unforgiveness or harbor it in your heart. You can't give it a room. This is your bedroom, unforgiveness. You get to stay here. No, you don't get to stay anywhere in my heart. You get out. I rebuke you out of my house. That's out of me in the name of Jesus. You have no place to lodge in my heart because I don't want you. So you have to remember no matter what people do, no matter what they don't do, no matter what they promise you and what they, how they go back on their word, no matter what they fail to do, no matter how they renege on you or how often they renege on you, you must forgive. And when God wants you to do something good to or for that person, you must do it with a grateful heart, with a cheerful heart, not in a begrudging manner. All right, so let's go to Romans chapter 8. This is not going to be a long message because we all pretty much preached our message all day. Romans 8, starting at verse 5. And this is where God does a comparison between living in the flesh and living in the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Let me share this with you real quick. When you, <clears throat> let me put it in more human terms. Some of you know how to go after a lady. You see that lady, she is stacked like a brick house. And you just got to meet the woman. She is so gorgeous. But what do you do to go after her? What types of, of uh, inconveniences and sacrifices do you make? to win that lady over. And you ladies, what sacrifices and things do you make to win that fine hunk of man over? You wanna win his attention. You get all cute and dutied up, don't you? You smell good, you look good. Oh yes, you even walk good or switch, so to speak. <laughs> But you're trying to draw this guy's attention. So you're going after. You're on hot pursuit. How many of you are on hot pursuit to live in the ways of the Holy Spirit? How many of you are in hot pursuit after holiness? How many of you hunger for holiness? Hmm. I love that song. How many of you do that? You... The, the word says, when you seek the things of the kingdom, when you seek the Lord and his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. But sometimes what we do is we seek our own. We seek the things that matter to us. Sometimes the things that matter to you are just like a child. A child is upset because somebody's playing with their toy. That matters to the child. But guess what? In the, in the big scheme of things, that's childish. That's child's play. That's immaturity. And the child has a hissy fit or a full-blown temper tantrum like some of you adults still do right now. And you give somebody an earful with your temper tantrum. You treat somebody with spite and indifference out of your temper tantrum because you're having a hissy fit because it's something that was done or not done. And you have a grudge and you're ticked off. You're angry. You're frustrated. You have a, 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 a what do they call it? You have a, a chip on your shoulder. And you don't like it, but you're wallowing in it, aren't you? You're basking in the resentment. You're basking in the spite. You're basking in the wrath. What does the Bible say in Psalms 37? Forsake wrath. And some of you will not forsake it. You, you fellowship with it. You Become one with the wrath. You become one with the resentment because you're going to live your life based on what matters to you rather than what matters to God. Hmm. Godliness is holiness, y'all. Holiness is righteousness. That involves the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That includes controlling that tongue, controlling that temper. And listen, this is what I always say. If you don't have self-control, ask God to fill you with more of his Holy Spirit. That's one of the main fruits of the Holy Spirit, self-control, which the Bible refers to as temperance. So if you don't have it, if you don't have the ability to forgive. You don't have the ability to let bygones be bygones. You don't have the ability to let dead dogs lie. What you end up doing is stirring the pot and stirring the pot and stirring the pot. Every time you talk about it, every time you think about it, every time you muse on it, you want to blow up and blow your stack. You want to give somebody an earful. You want to get in their face and get them told because they did you wrong. But guess what? No matter what, people who love you, people who hate you, people who respect you, people who have contempt for you, all people at one point or another, they are all going to disappoint you. 
They're all going to hurt you. They're all going to disrespect you. They're all going to disappoint you when you have expectations and they don't live up to. Because guess what? We all fall short of the glory of God. That's why the Bible constantly tells us, trust God. Let God be true and every man a lie. Because everybody is going to fail you at one point or another. Because we are faulty. We have sin sick issues. It's all in our flesh. It's all in our fiber. It's all in our psyche. And if we lose sight of that, we will lose many friendships because we refuse to acknowledge the sin sickness that's in the flesh. And the flesh is with every single person on this planet. The point is, do you give your authority? Do you yield your obedience? Do you yield to God's will? Do you yield to the word? Are you reading the word? See, uh, um, what's the word? Um, mm, mm, mm. Romans 12 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed, be not conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed transform for some of you who may not know what it means means change change y'all about face we dealt with that last week if you want to get deep into that listen to last week's message transformed by the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind the washing of the word but if you're not reading the word you don't know what God wants. You don't know what his ways are. You don't know what the moves of the Holy Spirit are. You don't know the difference between the spirit and the flesh. You don't know hardly anything. So you live your life by your own dictates, baby. No, 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 no. So sorry, Charlie, but no, 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 no. That's not the way to go. It's not. Because you will end up making you will end up wreaking havoc, bringing way more problems into your life. You see, the reason that God has all these little guidelines is the same way we have signal lights on the street. The same reason we have traffic cops in Brooklyn standing in the intersection guiding traffic or a traffic cop when the signal light goes out, you see there's a traffic cop guiding traffic. Why? To eliminate crashes, to eliminate car accidents to eliminate people getting hurt. That's why, to keep the order. Everything with God is decent and in order. But when we go in our flesh, we are, we are throwing caution to the wind. And the Bible says, if you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. So even if you have a right to be angry, even if they did you wrong, guess what? You better take that to God first. Get your spirit cleaned up. If God tells you handle it and go and confront it in a loving manner, do so. But if God enables you to forgive and let bygones be bygones and he cleans your spirit of it completely, guess what? Forget about it. When you look at the scheme of things, it's not a big deal. It's like a puff in the wind. You smell something one minute and it's gone the next. You ever go down the street, you're on the road and you smell, whoo, what is that, sulfur? What is that, manure out there? Are we going past the cow patch? What is that? But before you know it, the smell is gone. And you have to treat life's vicissitudes the same way. It may feel like a very big deal to you right now, but you go to God first and you allow him to wash your spirit with his word. You allow him to wash your spirit with the comfort of his Holy Spirit. You allow him to fill you with all the abilities to forgive and forget. And guess what? 
He will show you just how minuscule that problem really is. He will show you just how petty the, the thing you're upset about really is. And your life can can go through a much smoother road. He says he goes ahead of you to make the rough places smooth, the crooked places straight. What does that mean? That means you can live a bumpy life if you want. If you insist on it, live that bumpy life on that bumpy, crooked road all you want. Or you can go to God with every issue, every nook and cranny, every pimple, every dip, every problem that haunts you, that drives you to your knees. And guess what? When you get through with him and he gets through with you, the road ahead is smooth. It's smooth, baby. You're like you're floating on a cloud because all of the bumps, all the dips, all the curves, they're straightened out. They're smoothed out because you took it to God, the one who has the power to smooth out your life. So I ask you, how you want it? Rough or easy? How do you want it? Straight or crooked? How do you want it? Bumpy or smooth? That is your choice. How you approach life, how you approach problems with relationships, how you approach uh, challenges in your life, it's up to you. How you choose to react to it. It's your choice. It's always your choice. But God, remember, is always a very present help in trouble. And I'm going to end with this scripture. Go with me. This was not on the agenda. This was not in my itinerary, but I feel to read this scripture right now. Go with me to Psalms 46, and this will be our closing statement for this message. Please listen to every word, because this is a very rich scripture. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. <laughs>